Titan is Saturn's largest moon and the only moon in the solar system with clouds and a dense atmosphere. It is the only body with liquid on its surface other than Earth. NASA's James Webb Space Telescope and Hawaii's Keck Observatory have recently captured Titan in the near-infrared light. The new images show clouds in the northern hemisphere near Kraken Mare, the most immense known methane sea on the surface of the giant moon. They also revealed two clouds in Titan's atmosphere, prompting scientists to focus the Keck telescope toward Titan barely 30 hours later to confirm their existence. Stay tuned as we check out the stunning last pictures from Titan, Saturn's biggest moon. Titan is the only other world in the solar system that has seas, rivers and lakes. However, they are filled with liquid methane and ethane rather than water. These hydrocarbons, water and ammonia cause clouds and rain on the giant moon. Christian Huygens, a Dutch scientist, discovered it telescopically in 1655, making it the first planetary satellite discovered after Jupiter's four Galilean moons. Titan appears as a nearly featureless brownish-red globe in an Earth-based telescope, its surface permanently obscured by a thick haze. It is more significant than Mercury and more massive than Pluto. It resembles a planet in many ways than a typical moon. Titan's solid body has a diameter of 5,150 kilometers, that's 3,200 miles, which is only about 120 kilometers or 75 miles less than Jupiter's moon Ganymede, the largest moon in the solar system. It orbits Saturn at a mean distance of 1,221,850 kilometers, that's 759,220 miles, with one revolution taking 15.94 Earth days. It spins once on its axis for each revolution. Thus, it always maintains the same face towards Saturn and leads with the same face in its orbit. Titan has bulk features with other massive outer solar system ice moons, including Jupiter's Ganymede and Neptune's largest moon Triton. Titan, however, dwarfs Ganymede in size when its hundreds of kilometers of the atmosphere are factored in. Titan's relatively low mean density of 1.88 grams per cubic centimeter suggests that its interior is a mix of rocky and icy materials, with the latter likely containing ammonia mixed with water and methane, and possibly liquid layers covered by a solid, primarily water ice crust. A rocky core may form the center and extend to approximately 80% of the total radius. Gerard P. Kuiper, a Dutch-American astronomer, discovered evidence of methane absorption by sunlight in Titan's atmosphere in 1944. However, studies of the refraction of radio waves in the atmosphere conducted during Voyager 1's flyby in 1980 revealed that methane molecules must account for only a tiny percentage of the number of molecules in the atmosphere, and that the dominant molecules are not detectable in the visible light spectrum. A Voyager infrared and radio data comparison indicated that the atoms and molecules that make up the atmosphere had a mean molecular weight of 28.6 atomic mass units. Thus, Voyager correctly identified molecular nitrogen as the most likely principal constituent, though atomic argon could also be present. Other elements found by Voyager in Titan's atmosphere by their absorption of ultraviolet radiation from the Sun were molecular hydrogen and numerous carbon-bearing molecules, which are thought to be generated by solar ultraviolet light acting on nitrogen and methane at high altitudes. Beginning in 2004, the Cassini spacecraft performed a series of close flybys of Titan while it orbited Saturn and gathered data. The Huygens entry probe, which landed on Titan's surface by parachute in 2005 and carried out several physical and chemical tests of the atmosphere, was the first spacecraft to land on an outer solar system planet. The Cassini-Huygens mission found that Titan's surface is very young by planetary standards, with just a few giant impact craters recorded. The surface is mainly made up of water ice, hydrocarbons, methane and ammonia ice. 
Because the declination of the Sun in Titan's sky varies by nearly 60 degrees over a Saturnian year, which lasts almost 30 Earth years, Titan's atmosphere and surface are expected to undergo seasonal changes. During the primary Cassini mission, which took place in the Southern Hemisphere's summer of 2004 to 2008, more clouds and lakes were recorded in the northern polar regions during winter. Clouds in temperate zones were exclusively seen in the Southern Hemisphere. As an equinox neared in 2010 and clouds arrived for the first time in the Northern temperate zones, there were signs that the situation might reverse, at least in part. Carbon monoxide, carbon dioxide and the organic gases propane, ethane, acetylene, ethylene, hydrogen cyanide diacetylene, methylacetylene, cyanoacetylene and cyanogen are all detected in equal amounts. By combining spectrometers on JWST with the optical image quality from Keck, we get a real complete picture of Titan, Depater explained. Since JWST can see things in infrared light which is invisible to the human eye, it was able to precisely determine cloud and haze elevations. You now know what Titan is like. So let's return to the breathtaking images. Astrophysicist Avi Loeb of Harvard University has proposed that Titan may have created the chemical ingredients to life. These fresh photographs and findings lend credence to his theory. Life on Titan would prove not just that we are not alone, but also that we may be late to the party, he argues. To most cosmologists who have seen the universe as dead for over a century, the possibility that it was once teeming with life following the formation of the first stars would be a humiliating finding. Titan's surface is formed by wind and maybe rain in liquid methane, much like Earth's dark hydrocarbon deposits may be found in many river channels, which can be seen flowing along faults or having considerable branching. Methane's triple joints, the point at which a material may exist as a liquid, a solid and a gas, is very near Titan's surface temperature and pressure. This suggests that methane, like water on Earth, may play a crucial role in erosion processes on Titan. The possibility that Titan might have information about the first life in the cosmos has made it an intriguing destination for quite some time. Titan may have substances of biological relevance, such as amino acids, due to its organic material deposits. All organisms on Earth are composed of amino acids. Titan's atmosphere is comparable to Earth's in terms of nitrogen gas predominance and surface pressure, roughly one and a half bars or 50% greater than sea level pressure on Earth. Titan's atmosphere is substantially colder with 94 Kelvin, that's 290 degrees Fahrenheit or 179 degrees Celsius surface temperature and no free oxygen. A troposphere similar to Earth's extends from its surface to an altitude of 42 kilometers, that's 26 miles, where a minimum temperature of 71 Kelvin or 332 degrees Fahrenheit, 202 degrees Celsius is reached. Nitrogen clouds do not seem to exist owing to temperatures constantly above the nitrogen condensation threshold. Titan's nitrogen-rich atmosphere is considered secondary, similar to Earth's. It was most likely formed by the photochemical disassociation of ammonia, a common ice in the outer solar system, into molecular nitrogen and hydrogen. Titan's atmosphere relies on a careful balancing act between the planet's surface gravity, atmospheric molecular mass and solar heating to stay significant for billions of years. The longer an atmospheric molecule is kept around the Moon, the stronger the attraction between the Moon and the molecule must be. Conversely, the hotter the atmosphere, the more likely the molecule will be lost to space. Jupiter's Galilean moons and our own Moon are too hot to hold on to large quantities of gases. And yet the nitrogen molecule has survived in both Titan's icy environment and Earth's somewhat warm, adequately massive one. Neither Titan nor Earth has preserved the lighter hydrogen molecule. Initial observations from the Cassini-Huygens mission, which started studying the Saturnian system in 2004, 
reveal that methane is a tiny but highly substantial atmospheric element, probably performing a function similar to water vapor in Earth's troposphere. About 5% of the atmospheric molecules near Titan's surface are methane, with the proportion decreasing with altitude. When Cassini initially arrived at Titan, it saw a massive eruption of methane cumulus clouds over Titan's south polar area. Later in the mission, a much larger cloud system was discovered over the north polar region. Temperate zones have seen smaller, more transitory clouds. There is indirect evidence that methane rain occurs on occasion near the surface. NASA's Dragonfly mission will launch in 2025 and arrive on Titan in 2034. It will spend two years studying Titan's prebiotic chemistry. The lander is a quadcopter that can switch locations every 16 days. Hopefully, it will find answers to the unsolved puzzles. We hope you enjoyed watching this video. If yes, we're sure you would like this next video here. Thanks for watching.